Hey, partner community, it's Paul Storage here at the Cisco office on the ninth floor, and I have with me Dave Murphy, the legend. Dave Murphy, the UC guru here at Cisco. So anyway, you know, I wanted to bring in Dave today because I thought it would be a good idea to actually talk about line of business and some business outcomes. And before we were putting this together, we we're coming out because we thought that would be good to understand what the lingo, what the jargon, what the conversation needs to be with these lines of business because mm -hmm. they are different. We're very comfortable talking to IT guys, but when you really look at two transitions that are really happening right now is IT budgets are shrinking and line and business budgets are growing. So Dave, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, very excited to be here. Anyway, we talked about line of business. Let's yes. talk about sales. Okay, uh, sales folks, what resonates in the sales folks? And as we, just a quick note, when we talk about these different lines of businesses, you have to understand what keeps them awake, what they care about. They don't care about video, they don't care about WebEx, they don't care about Jabber. They care about what they need to achieve. So in the sales environment, mm -hmm. uh, a couple different great use cases. Sales team meetings, right? We all get together and do our commits. We have our Monday morning commits. Bringing that community together, especially dispersed teams in, a, say, a WebEx environment, allows me to see other people on the team and share information. It's a great use case. But for sales, it's really all about three things. I want to increase my sale, right? So I want to cross it up sell effectively. I want to reduce the time to sale because that will take cost out of that sales process and a drive additional margin. Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking to sales folks or sales uh, executives, talk about enabling uh, on the street sales folks with a new uh, capability, a new set of capabilities so that when they're in front of a customer and they're trying to do a piece of business and that customer comes up with a question or a concern that that person cannot answer, traditionally we would Take that down as an action item, disengage the sales cycle, get the answer, come back, re-engage, and try to get back to where we were for close. Mm -hmm. Now, I take out my tablet, I look at Jabber, Jennifer the engineer is available, I dial her up, can you talk to my customer? Yes, one button push on that tablet, I have a WebEx, Jennifer's talking face-to-face -to -face with my customer, sure. answering his questions, bringing up some supporting information. Any more questions? No, thank you so much, Jennifer, goodbye. Mr. Customer, press our three copies. So if I can address issues during the sales visit that allow me to shorten that cycle time or actually execute a buy at that time by grabbing remote expertise, mm -hmm. technical or executive, in a rich media way, on demand, that's going to be huge for the sales guys. You know, I just tend to think we're all in sales, right? So if there's not one group that we can resonate and be relevant the most, it's obviously sales. Because we're doing the same thing they're doing, and these are the tools that we use. You should be using them too. Agreed. Yeah. Let's talk about marketing. Uh, so the marketing folks, what keeps them up late at night, right? What do they get paid on? Uh, their MBOs are around um, number of leads. Mm -hmm. uh, number of leads and cost per lead. So every marketing VP in the world goes to bed knowing what their cost per lead is. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to talk about. So when you're talking to the marketing folks, we want to talk about our ability to help them uh, cross and upsell more effectively. Generation 1 clients can be invited to a Generation 2 product uh, webinar uh, on WebEx and put up a polling slide. Would you like more information to be contacted? If they click yes, we know who that is. That's a hot lead, dump it into Salesforce. Um, I also want to be able to uh, cross-sell across my portfolio. And this resonates for people like us who may have you know, Cisco core out switch and security, but not UC. And so if I can identify people who are consuming one part of my product portfolio, but not the other, I can bring them into an environment where I can educate those folks pull out those leads. And what we found is by doing it in that environment, a webinar environment, actually do reduce my cost per lead. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, in most cases, we grow the number of leads. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what that marketing person is going to care about. All right, good, good. Last one, or maybe one or two more, HR. HR. So HR, uh, for them, a big part of their function is educating their uh, community of, of employees. Mm -hmm. uh, new benefits, new rollouts, new plans. And so there's a lot of education that goes on within HR. Mm -hmm. So for them, one of the things that they measure is cost per student. If I have a new into the HR benefit initiative coming out, how do I get that out to the entire organization? How do I do it in a cost-effective way? And allow me to do it in an environment where I can record it, capture it, and begin to create asynchronous content that people can view at a later time. Sure. The other thing about HR too is, you know, a big part of the function is to identify and bring on top talent. And so the use of video conferencing or WebEx or even Jabber Guest uh, allows me to have a remote candidate, bring them into the HR folks, record that session. If we think they're right for the position they're being, they're, you know, reviewed for, I can take that recording and give it to stakeholders who can then review that at their own leisure or off hours, come back and give me feedback so I can reduce my onboarding. 
the cost of onboarding an employee is pretty significant. Sure. And if I can reduce that cost and shorten the time, mm -hmm. and we all know this thing, you know, around here too, I got to go through so many interview cycles and I'm worried about calendars and such that it may take me three months to bring on a critical resource when I can do it in six weeks because I'm using video or web conferencing. Interesting. Let's do one more. C-suite. You know, when we talk about the C-suite, whether it's CEO, CFO, or CTO, or even, you know, a lot of them are also talking about productivity, next gain, market penetration. Maybe just a couple of comments there, Dave. Absolutely. So, you know, the C-suite, they care about the business, growing the business uh, and driving profitability with them. So whenever you're talking to the C-suite, you want to talk about our ability to um, support them in getting products to market faster, designing products faster, penetrating new markets, uh, and rolling out new licensing agreements or distribution agreements, whatever it is that they do to make money, and you take a look at their process from the beginning to you know cash from the customer, we can impact those on design, on customer care, on customer interface, on partner management, mm -hmm. uh, you know, without, with, throughout their value chain. Sure. So they really care about those strategic things. The other thing that you should talk to the C-suite about is innovation, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, you know, when I do big hotel room kind of events and I say, hold up your hand if you think innovation is really critical, and we talk about Wang and Smith mm -hmm. Roll and all the folks who didn't innovate, uh, everybody's hand is up. And I say, leave your hand up if you have an innovation budget, all the hands come down. Yeah. Yeah. Collaboration is their innovation budget. And really start to, you know, only 25% of the companies that are on the Fortune 500 list 25 years ago are still there. Okay, so if you don't innovate, you don't survive, and this is going to allow you to harness all that expertise you have in your organization, move at the speed of business, innovate, and grow. You know, Dave, I can't think of all the technology that Cisco has in its portfolio. Collaboration, by far, is the one that's uh, business transformation. Absolutely. And, uh, so, you know, Dave is a fantastic resource. I'm sure that some of the people out there in the uh, community have actually had Dave do presentations in front of their clients at the, uh, the client briefing center here. It's still open for business. Dave is a great resource, and he really understands a lot of the business outcomes. So let's book those appointments and get them into the CBC. Absolutely. We close four out of five of those. You bring them into the briefing center. After proper discovery, we're going to have a good time. Yeah. And the other thing, just to support your efforts in the partner community, uh, in May, we're still baking the invitation, but it should go out in the next week or so, uh, we'll have a UC admin demo lab. Uh, some of you are familiar with those, so be on the lookout for that. Any question for us, reach out to me. You can reach me at 212-714-4051. And I'm 212-714-4477. Until next week, it's Dave and Paul. Talk to you. Take care.